Thank you all very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. How you win elections is not by raising money, although it's in a component. How you win elections is by having great candidates. I wouldn't have said all of this few sentences back in January of uh, 2013. But here's what we had when we started. We had six good candidates in six states that we could win in. I should take a step back and remind you that it takes six Republican victories to be in the majority. We would have had, this is the part I would not have told you, we would have had to run the table. And to get six for six is probably not a likely outcome. So we tried to figure out how do we make certain that we can get beyond having to win 100% of six races. Today I would tell you we have 12 great candidates in 12 states. And I hope we run. I hope we win 12 of 12. And we might. But I think we have a better chance of winning six out of 12 than we had out of winning six out of six. We have three seats in which Democrats are retiring in, in our states, in states that Governor Romney carried overwhelmingly. West Virginia, I think the Republican wins in West Virginia, Shelley Moore Capito. South Dakota, I think Governor Rounds, Mike Rounds wins in South Dakota. Montana, I think Steve Daines wins in Montana. Those are three states that the Democrat incumbent senator had a good chance of being reelected, but chose not to run again. So there's three seats. Then I would go to, there's four seats in which the Democrats are running for reelection in states that Governor Romney carried. Three of them in which Romney carried overwhelmingly. The most likely seat in my view to flip is Arkansas. I think Tom Cotton, many of you have met Tom Cotton. He's been here. Arkansas is an example of where we encouraged folks in the state to rally around a candidate. And Tom Cotton is an example of the candidate that's supported by all kinds of folks within our party and has a great history and background and is likely to become a United States Senator. Then you go down to Louisiana. Uh, Cassidy, Representative Cassidy is a uh, short term recent addition to the House, U.S. House of Representatives. He's a physician. He and his wife have spent every weekend for years conducting free clinics for the people of Baton Rouge who couldn't afford health care. He is the guy who understands Obamacare and its consequences. And he agreed to become a candidate to run for the United States Senate. We have polls that show him up at 51%. Louisiana has a 50 plus one uh, requirement in order to, to uh, advance. There could be a runoff if you don't get more than 50% of the vote. And uh, that's one that we think is uh, certainly a significant opportunity for a Republican to win. The next one is, um, I don't know how to divide these two, it's Alaska and, uh, and North Carolina. Uh, Tom Tillis is the uh, Republican Speaker of the, of the House of Representatives in North Carolina. Uh, he is the guy, and the Republicans hadn't been in the majority in North Carolina. He runs as a new member and becomes a new member of the, of the North Carolina uh, House of Representatives, takes on changing the makeup and brings a Republican majority to the House of Representatives in North Carolina, becomes the Speaker, and now is the candidate for the United States Senate from North Carolina. Alaska, uh, Mark Begich barely won uh, at a time in which the incumbent was under indictment. That indictment, you re may remember, for Ted Stevens disappeared, uh, was dismissed by the Democrat Justice Department after the election. Of course. Uh, and he won by a handful of votes. And that's the primary that occurs today. Uh, there are three Republicans, all of which seem committed to supporting Beverly and Ken, all three which seem committed to supporting the eventual winner of today's primary. And uh, Alaska is a solidly Republican uh, red state. And so we have three open seats. We have four uh, Democrats who I believe have serious challenges and the Republican can win. And then we have some places that are open seats that are very purple. Uh, I know a little bit about Iowa because as a Kansan, every time Bob Dole ran for president, we Kansans had to get on a bus and go to Des Moines. Uh, so I've spent some time over the years in Iowa. And uh, Joni Ernst is the Republican candidate. You may have heard or seen her uh, 
television advertising about growing up on a farm castrating pork, uh, castrating pigs, can, can, be, be, can be very comfortable going to Washington, D.C. and eliminating with a knife for, uh, pork. <laughs> she's a farm girl. Uh, she's a state senator. She's uh, in the uh, National Guard. Uh, and she is a great candidate. We come very close to being able to say we will win Iowa in November. West Virginia, Ed Gillespie is like the best political strategist, kind of doing his own thing. Virginia is a difficult place for a Republican these days, but if there's a candidate that can win, Ed Gillespie is it. The last one I'd mention is Monica Webby. Monica is a pediatric neurosurgeon. Her state is Oregon. Anybody in the room believe that a Republican is going to get elected in Oregon? Let me describe a couple of things to you and then ask you the question again. Oregon is the place that the Obamacare and the uh, exchange is the worst in the country. They have failed tremendously. They have closed their state exchange. They're asking the federal government to come in and take over their exchange. Here you have Monica Webby, who is a pediatric neurosurgeon. She has operated on every baby in Oregon that had a brain tumor and is loved and respected by every family in that circumstance. She has an ad. I showed it to the crusty old Republican senators at lunch a few months ago and tears just start flowing. It's mom describing about how no one gave her any hope that she could deliver her baby uh, alive. She went to Monica Webby, Dr. Webby, and found hope. The ad ends with a 13-year-old daughter expressing her gratitude for her life that Monica Webby helped provide. She has a great story. She was the president of the Oregon Medical Society. She was one of the first to come out in opposition to the damage that Obamacare would do. She was the chairperson of the Tort Reform Committee in Oregon. Here's a lady who has never run for office, but has decided that changing the United States Senate and changing our country as a result of that is more important at this stage in her life than anything else she could do. Those are the kind of candidates you want who are committed to a cause, the cause of America, and can convey their love and care and compassion for people in the process of getting elected. Incidentally, she has the best slogan of any candidate out there. Change your senator, not your doctor. Oh.